Welcome back. This is section 13.1 on solutions. And a solution is a mixture um, in which everything is homogeneous. So everywhere you look, you've got exactly the same mixture, same composition. You can't find more of something and less of something else. Everything else is just mixed perfectly homogenized. So if you think of Kool-Aid uh, when you think of a, of a solution. So what it's a mixture of is the solute and the solvent. And a lot of times it's really easy to tell. A solute is some kind of a powder that you dissolve in some kind of a liquid and that's the solvent. But it doesn't have to be that way because you can have anything be the solute and anything be the solvent as long as something's mixing in something else. So normally you want to think of the, the solvent as whatever you have the most of. And then what you have the least of would be the solutes. And you can have more than one solutes since it's a mixture. So in Kool-Aid, you would have sugar, you would have dye, you would have uh, citric acid, and um, plus the water. Remember, water is also a component of it. So all of that would be together. So the solute is what you mix in. The solvent is what's dissolving it. Um, and so if you're talking about an aqueous solution, so remember aqueous means in water, then water is the solvent. And most of the time in this chapter, we're going to be looking at water being the solvent. And then you dissolve something, either a liquid or a solid most of the time, in that, um, in that water. You can also have gases mixed in the water. So you can have oxygen or carbon dioxide. That's why, that's why a, um, like a Coke or a Pepsi or whatever fizzes, because you've got gases dissolved in the water too. So he, um, the thing at the bottom will give you all kinds of different components where you have this the solvent and the solute and some examples of each. Now if you have a solvent then you have to be able to dissolve something. Not everything dissolves a substance. If you have intermolecular forces inside the inside the ions or inside the parts of that solute then your solvent is going to have to be able to rip those apart. That means your attraction forces between your solvent and your solute have to be strong enough to separate the, the interactions between the solute and the solute. So if your solute and your solute, the, the, the interactions between the different parts of your solute are stronger than the pull from the solvent, then it won't dissolve it. You'll simply, it would simply settle to the bottom of whatever you're dissolving it in and there wouldn't be a dissolution. You have to have something strong enough to rip apart the intermolecular forces inside the solute. So if you have ions, if you have ions, then those ions have to be ripped apart. And if you have, say, water that has all kinds of um, dipole interactions with, with charged particles or other things, it can rip apart these things. Remember the generic term for, um, for hydration is solvation. So if you surround a solute molecule with uh, a part of the solvent, then it's solvated. Remember, hydration is a specific example of that, where the water is the solvent, and it surround the water would surround that that solute particle, and it's called hydration. So it it completely uh, covers it or surrounds it. This is a really cool picture of uh, hydration. So you've got sodium here in purple, you've got chlorine here in green. And the water molecule, remember, is made up of oxygen, which is red, and hydrogen, which is white. And the oxygen is negative, and the hydrogens are positive. So the negative portion of the, of the water molecule is going to be oriented towards the, the sodium, and the hydrogen parts are going to be oriented towards the chlorine, and they um, are aligned in a very specific way so that they don't get in each other's way. Because remember, these hydrogens, are, have electrons that want to stay away from each other. The, elect, uh, the oxygens have electrons that want to stay away from each other as well. So they configure themselves in a way that they kind of stay out of each other's way and completely surround um, sodium or chlorine. In this case, one, two, three, four, five. Five oxygens completely hydrate a chlorine. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six water molecules, the oxygens would orient themselves around the sodium to completely uh, hydrate the sodium. Very important part of this section 
is that if you're going to solvate something, if you're going to dissolve something, three things have to happen. You have to separate the solute molecules from each other, and there might be intermolecular bonds that are pulling them and attracting them to each other. So if you're going to break them apart, they have to be broken apart. You have to have some, some, something stronger to rip apart the interactions that they have for each other. You also have to separate the solvent molecules from other solvent molecules because you're going to have to end up having spaces for that solute to be inside. So if the, if the solvent is really attracted to itself, that's going to be really hard to do. If it's very, very attracted to itself, the, there's not going to be any spaces for the solvent or solute to be inside. And then the entire delta H of, of all of it is going to be, is going to attract the solvent attracting the solute. So you're going to have a certain amount of energy required to rip apart the solute. This, in this case, is uh, heat number one. So that's going to be endothermic. It's going to take energy to rip apart. Then heat number two, you're going to have to have energy to rip apart the solvent from itself. Okay, so the solvent is attracted. Water, remember, has hydrogen bonds. It's attracted to itself. It would have to be pulled apart in order to let the, let the solute have room to be inside. And then when you do have an attraction between the, these blues and purples, when there's an attraction here, that's going to be exothermic. So that will probably be exothermic. This would probably be endothermic, and this is endothermic. When you add them all up, it depends on what you've got. It's possible that you could have an exothermic reaction where, where this is releasing more energy than these two added together. Sometimes you would have an endothermic reaction where these two have more energy than is released when they uh, attract each other. And so some dissolution is going to be endothermic where... If you dissolve something, uh, a solute in some water or some other solvent, it might get cold. That would be endothermic. Or other cases where you put it and it might be very hot and that would be exothermic. So it depends on what it is you're dissolving and in what you are dissolving it. So this is what I was talking about before. If, you, if the solvent is separating the solute from each other, okay, that's going to take some energy. The Let's say you have table salt. The sodium and chloride are attracted to each other. There's positives and negatives in there. They're, they're attracted like socks in a dryer. If you're going to rip them apart, you have to put energy to rip those apart. So the solute ripping apart from each other um, and the solvent ripping apart. See, the solvent, remember, is in this case water. Water's attracted to itself. You've got hydrogen bonding inside water. That's why you have a, the water will, will form um, droplets because uh, it has high... high um, surface energy, it's the same thing. They have to be ripped apart in order to do it. Now, you have to put energy to rip apart the solvent from itself. You have to put energy to rip apart the solute from itself. But then, since since one is positive and the other negative, you're going to get some energy back when you put them together and the solvent is now attracted to the solute. So you are going to get some back. So how much back are you going to get if it's if you get more back than you put in, then it's an exothermic reaction. If you don't put as much, if you don't get as much back as you put in, then it's an endothermic reaction. So some dissolving is going to be exothermic and release heat. Uh, some would be um, endothermic and absorb heat. So if it is exothermic, if you get more energy out, okay, um, often it's going to be a spontaneous reaction. It'll just happen by itself because you're getting more energy out. Um, some things don't occur spontaneously, okay? You have to somehow, there has to be other th explanations of why you would say do an endothermic reaction. Um, it's not going to happen all by, all by itself um, unless other processes occur. So um, exothermic often will be spontaneous. It'll happen just automatically. Other things have to be tweaked a little bit. Endothermic ones may not happen automatically. The other key component of this chapter is that there's a natural tendency towards mixing. If you were to, to separate two things that can mix together and you separate them and you simply just remove the barrier that's holding the back, they'll mix automatically. Um, there's just a natural tendency to to put things together. And mixing of gases, say, if you were to open a bottle of perfume, 
you could smell that perfume in just a minute anywhere in the room. Uh, gases will mix. You can smell that. Um, that's spontaneous. It happens automatically. If you were to simply uh, put, uh, put two things in some water, um, eventually all of it would be mixed. All of the molecules would mix. They just bump into each other until they're mixed. It's a natural tendency to do that. And it doesn't require energy from the surroundings to do it. It's a spontaneous, happens naturally. What's happening, it really is not stealing energy. What's happening, it is trying to get towards more randomness. And randomness is called entropy. So when something tends towards entropy, a lot of times it's going to be spontaneous. If the end is more random than the beginning, if it's more orderly at the beginning and less orderly at the end, that entropy or randomness can happen spontaneous. So you're going to have really two things. You're going to have the energy component. You know, the exothermic happens a lot of times uh, spontaneously. Endothermic, not so much. But in the case of, of some chemicals that when you dissolve them get hot, but it happens automatically, they will dissolve on their own. Um, what's happening is if you can get them random enough, that so you can have, remember, enthalpy is that delta H. So that's heat of reaction, exothermic or endothermic. And then the other one is entropy. And the entropy, remember, is chaos or disorder. If it tends towards high disorder, then it could still happen automatically. So we're looking at does when I put some stuff in the water, say, when I put a teaspoon of water, is it going to dissolve? Well, it dissolves a lot of times if the energy is right. Okay, so if it gets hot, a lot of times it'll happen automatically, it'll get hot. Or if it becomes more disorderly, a lot of times that will cause it to dissolve, even if your enthalpy is not right. The last thing in this section is that um, if you put, say, salt in water, you're not doing a chemical reaction. All you're doing is breaking the salt, the sodium from the chloride. You're just ripping it apart and solvating it or hydrating it with water. Um, if you were to dissolve, if you were to evaporate the water, you'd still get sodium chloride back. If you uh, do a chemical reaction and you get a, um, if, if you actually do a chemical reaction, you can get a, something to disappear looking like it's dissolved. But if you were to take that new solution and evaporate it, if you get the same stuff you started with, then you dissolved it. If you have something totally new, then what's happened is you had a, a chemical reaction and you ended up with something brand new, but it looked like it dissolved. So just because you can put some powder in some stuff and it goes away doesn't mean that you dissolved it. It's possible that you actually had a chemical reaction there. And so you have to kind of know what's going on. You have to be able to look and say, okay, do I have the same stuff or do I have different stuff? Uh, if you have the same stuff, then you didn't, there's no chemical reaction, you just dissolved. Um, you can still have the energy uh, get hot or cold even without a chemical reaction, uh, but, but sometimes it is a chemical reaction. You have to be careful.